the contact arm assemblies. All right, very important. Impossible for me to show you all the different applications that they can apply to. There's dozens of them, okay? But you can see that we offer a variety of different materials on them. This is a soft sponge. Oh, yes. Okay? okay. That's yeah. a, what we call a platen. That's a hard cork. Okay? Here's one with nothing. It's a slack arm, all right, or a turbine blade arm. So, you know, we, we offer, based on your application, if, you want, if you're working on something where you need a firm backing, you know, you're going to go with just maybe a thin piece of uh, roulon or whatever on that to give you a little bit firmness behind. If you want something that's maybe not flat, a little off round, you go with the soft sponge okay. so that you can kind of conform to any radius or off contour, contour type of piece okay. possible. Yeah. All right. Uh, the, the hard cork, you know, primarily if you're deburring an edge. We talked about different materials on the platen. All right. Now the contact arm assembly consists of primarily three different pieces. You got the contact arm, you've got the platen, which is the side attachment that's pressure sensitive adhesive. So it's just a, a, a peel and stick. That's okay. how it's adhered to the contact arm. All right. Okay, so and then you've got your contact wheel assembly. Now, the contact wheel assembly, you can see this one's made out of a hard rubber, and we also get into steel. Now, you can see the diameter of the steel wheels, pretty small. Yeah. All right. Now, we do a really good job in our catalog. One thing you have to be aware of is that if you're selling a contact arm assembly for an application where they need that small wheel to get in restricted areas, that you need to look in the catalog for specific arms we show where we ask the customer to turn down their air pressure. Another reason to have a filter regulator exactly. at your workbench. I love that. Idea. Okay. That's a great idea. The reason is the bearings are small, you're taking steel, you're applying it to steel. Yeah. All right. All you have in between there is a piece of paper. So you're going to have a lot of heat build up. It's going to fry those bearings out. So if you regulate the pressure down to 45, you're still going to get a very aggressive removal rate because it's steel on steel. Okay, let that take care of itself. All right, now, one thing you need to notice on the belt tools, we have a directional arrow. So if you take a look on the cover, it shows you that the, that's the direction that the belt is moving. All right, it's important that you make contact on the return side. Okay, you'll know. Because if you're not, sparks will be going away from you. Sparks should be coming toward you right. if you're making sparks. Okay? If you happen to be talking to your buddy about last night's hockey game, all right, I'm working on this, and I start talking and I flip it over, the belt's going to pop off. So this will track and keep the belt on. I don't care how hard you work it, you know, where, whatever you're putting it into or whatever, it will stay on as long as you're making contact on the return side. 